All right, we need to talk about something everyone's been missing in this PhD drama. Everyone's focused on Mike, but there's a way bigger question nobody's asking. How the hell did East Tennessee State University approve this dissertation in the first place? We're not talking about subjective quality issues or debatable methodology. We're talking about a thesis with athletes who were negative 1.6 years old, athletes who weighed less than a chihuahua, standard deviations that are mathematically impossible. And somehow, this passed through an entire committee of professors, survived a formal defense, got approved by the graduate school, and was officially archived as legitimate doctoral research. That's not a mic problem. That's a systemic failure at every single checkpoint. And today we're going to break down exactly how monumentally the entire academic system failed here. Because if this could pass, what the hell else has passed? Let me explain how a PhD thesis is supposed to get approved so you understand just how many people dropped the ball here. Step one, the supervisor. Your dissertation supervisor, in Mike's case, Mike Stone, is supposed to work with you for years. They review every chapter, catch errors, guide your methodology, and make sure the final product is publication quality before you even think about defending it. Mike Stone should have read this thesis multiple times. He should have caught the impossible statistics, the copy-pasted errors, the athletes who hadn't been born yet. That's his job. He failed completely. Step two, the committee. Before you defend, your committee, usually three to five professors, receives the full dissertation weeks in advance. They read it thoroughly, prepare questions, identify weaknesses, and decide if it's even worth defending. Every single committee member should have flagged the data errors. These aren't subtle issues. These are this athlete is negative years old level problems. You don't need a statistics degree to spot that. You just need functioning eyeballs. They all failed. Step three, the defense. The actual dissertation defense is where you present your research and answer detailed questions from the committee. This is supposed to be rigorous. They grill you on methodology, results, interpretations, everything. Mike stood in a room with multiple professors and somehow convinced them that athletes who were negative 1.6 years old and weighed less than a house cat were legitimate data points. And they all nodded and approved it. How Step four, revisions. After the defense, you typically do revisions based on committee feedback. Then those revisions get reviewed and approved before final submission. Apparently, nobody caught the errors during revisions either, or there were no revisions, which is also a massive failure. Step five, graduate school review. The final checkpoint is the graduate school itself. They're supposed to verify formatting, check that all requirements are met, and do a final quality control before officially archiving the dissertation. This is where someone should have noticed that the document had hundreds of spelling errors, missing spaces throughout, and copy-pasted sections with identical mistakes. This is basic quality control. They failed too. Step six, archival. The dissertation gets uploaded to the university repository and ProQuest, where it becomes part of the permanent academic record. And according to Mike's latest story, he uploaded the wrong version of his thesis to the university archive in 2013. And nobody at the university noticed for 12 years, even though that's their official archive, even though that's their responsibility to verify. This wasn't one person making one mistake. This was a complete systematic failure at every single level. That's not bad luck. That's not an oversight. That's institutional incompetence. These aren't debatable interpretations. These are objective, verifiable, impossible errors that anyone with basic reading comprehension should catch. And five professors with PhDs looked at this and said, yep, this is doctoral level work. So why did this happen? How could every checkpoint fail so catastrophically? Reason one, sports science has lower standards. Let's be honest about something nobody wants to say out loud. Sports science is not a rigorous field compared to actual STEM disciplines. If this was a mathematics PhD from Cambridge, it would be laughed out of the room. 
but sports science at a mid-tier regional university? Different story. The standards are just lower. That's not elitism, that's reality. Reason two, conflict of interest. Mike's supervisor was Mike Stone, a colleague and friend. They work in the same department. They publish together. They're professionally connected. When your supervisor has a personal and professional interest in your success, the rigor of their review tends to diminish. It's not malicious, it's just human nature. You're less likely to fail someone you work closely with. Reason three, nobody actually reads dissertations. Here's a dirty secret about academia. Most dissertations are never read by anyone except the committee that approves them. They get archived and forgotten. The committee knows this, the student knows this, everyone knows this. So there's less incentive to be rigorous because nobody's ever going to check. Mike's thesis sat in an archive for 12 years before Solomon actually read it. That's typical, and that's why the quality control is so lax. Reason four, rubber stamp culture. In many PhD programs, especially at lower ranked universities, the defense is more of a formality than a real test. If you showed up, did the work, and your supervisor supports you, you're going to pass. The committee isn't there to fail you, they're there to sign off on work that's good enough. And at TSU, apparently good enough includes data showing people who haven't been born yet. Reason five, low-ranked university, lower standards. East Tennessee State University is not a prestigious research institution. It's a regional teaching university. Their sports science program is not world-renowned. This isn't about shitting on ETSU specifically. There are hundreds of universities like this, but the reality is that PhD standards vary wildly by institution. A PhD from MIT is not the same as a PhD from a regional state school. And let's not pretend otherwise. If Mike submitted this thesis to a top tier program, his supervisor would have sent it back with fix this and resubmit before it ever reached the committee. The impossible statistics alone would have been caught in the first draft review. If somehow it made it to committee, the defense would have been brutal. They would have opened to the results tables, seen athletes with negative ages, and the defense would have been over before it started. Mr. Icerotel, can you explain how an athlete aged negative 1.6 years competed in Division I athletics? There is no answer to that question that results in PhD approval. But here's what really bothers me about this situation. According to Mike's latest story, he uploaded the wrong version of his thesis to the university archive in 2013. Let's assume that's true. That means East Tennessee State University has had the wrong version of an official doctoral dissertation in their archive for 12 years, and nobody noticed, nobody checked, Nobody verified that what was uploaded matched what was approved. That's an institutional failure. That's the university not doing its job. And when Mike got exposed and wanted to hide the evidence, they let him restrict access to the dissertation. Just like that. No questions asked. A PhD candidate can just decide, actually, don't let people see my public research, and the university complies. That's not how academic archives are supposed to work. Dissertations are public documents. They're supposed to be accessible. That's the point of making research public. But ETSU apparently just lets their graduates memory hole embarrassing work whenever they want to. This isn't just Mike's problem. This is an institutional reputation problem. And ETSU has done nothing to address it publicly. No statement about reviewing their standards. No acknowledgement that their process failed. Nothing just letting Mike restrict access and pretending it never happened. Here's what should happen as a result of this disaster. One, ETSU should review their PhD approval process. They should investigate how this passed and implement better quality control. They won't, but they should. Two, Mike's committee should explain themselves. Every professor who approved this should have to answer publicly how they missed impossible data. They won't, but they should. Three, the dissertation should be formally reviewed for retraction. Academic works with fraudulent or impossible data get retracted all the time. This qualifies. It won't happen, but it should. Four, 
ETSU should issue a statement acknowledging the failure and explaining what they're doing to prevent it. They won't because institutions hate admitting fault. Five, other ETSU dissertations should be spot-checked. If one got through with this quality, how many others are similarly bad? They should check. They won't. What will actually happen is nothing. ETSU will stay quiet, Mike will keep making content, and everyone will forget about this in a few months. But the institutional failure that created this situation will remain, and the next terrible dissertation will pass through the same broken system. That's the actual problem. Mike's just a symptom. I'm Zerk, and I'll see you in the next one, where hopefully we can talk about training instead of institutional failures, but probably not. Peace out.